I'm E. Chip. We are building an off-grid place in the Intermountain West. This is like probably the fourth installment in a series of videos we've been doing on this uh, solar Wi-Fi station. I conceived of this idea a couple of years ago before we ever got out here and got a hold of the um, local internet provider who has antennas closest to us, to our area, uh, to see if we could establish Wi-Fi here and if we could use solar power to power the antenna and everything we need uh, to get Wi-Fi here at Contentment. The company ran a preliminary check to see if we were within the distance that we would need to be in to be able to get the Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. And the tentative scan said yes. So we made arrangements to get Wi-Fi installed. Mm -hmm. So here's the follow-up video on that. This is a Hoffman box, a used, old used Hoffman box that I bought a while back. And if you know how much Hoffman boxes cost, you'll understand why I bought a used one. But it's in really good shape. Um, in the bottom of the Hoffman box will go two of these six volt batteries in series for 12 volts total. And uh, they will be hooked to this uh, solar charge controller, which will be hooked to one of these panels. We'll mount the panel, we'll install the batteries, uh, we may get around to do some wiring, things like that, but uh, the Wi-Fi people are coming tomorrow to install the PoE injector and get our Wi-Fi set up, so uh, we've got to get something done here. Let's do it. Looks like I need to shorten that one a bit. <laughs> um, when I put these in, I, I tend to leave just a hair of exposed wire, and that kind of helps with cooling and things like that in case there's some resistance on the line. But These two will hook to the battery. And these two will hook to the uh, power over ethernet injector, which will be mounted right here. And that's one thing about solar, folks. I mean, it's really not complicated and it doesn't have to be really expensive uh, if you want to do the work yourself. A few basic rules, knowing AC, DC, what alternating and direct current are and, uh, you know, how they work. Fusing, sizes of wires, you know, some basic things. If you want to apply yourself and you want to learn about it, then I encourage you to do it. But really, it's not that hard to uh, set up and install um, solar-powered anything. Just opened this box from Renogy. We've had it for a while. Just opened it. Looks like the uh, battery was broken in shipment. Don't know if it'll work or not. Kind of doubt it. We'll see. Okay, so we're at day two of this little project. I'm expecting the uh, Wi-Fi people to show up any time, but I had to change out the charge controller. I hooked up the charge control, the old one, last night, the Renogy. It would not work. And the reason for it is these little lugs in here that connect the wires, um, one of them was broken. It was the negative to the battery. And of course, it if it's not getting a connection, it won't it won't work um so i rushed down thankfully to the local amish store that happened to have one of these it's basically the very same uh maker and model all these are made in china uh just under different names this name is uh, uh i think it's ep ever or something like that or a no name or something like that well this was starting to shape up to be the uh project from hell <laughs> <laughs> but I think we finally got it going here. We got a little battery signal and something else going on there. I need to look at the instructions for. But um, we got the new charge controller hooked up. We got good, good strong connections there. Um, this is number four uh, battery wire, number four. And as you can see, I have these two six volt batteries. These are two 260 volt, I'm sorry, 260 amp hour um 12 uh six volt batteries that are run in series for 12 a total of 12 volts you'll show you're showing it's only 10 volts right now because they need to be charged up they've been sitting a while and it's time to uh, bring them up to speed we will hook up the solar panel uh to this pretty quickly and get this thing uh, nice and tuned up as you can see our uh, charge controller is working and uh, then when the wireless people get here 
I will have them install the PoE injector right here, and then a wire will go out over to the Shouse, uh, where we will hook it up to the modem and have dedicated Wi-Fi. I've got to go ahead and program this thing, so I'm going to do that now, and then get the um, solar panel uh, hooked up to it so we can get it charging. And by the way, these two batteries, these are what they call AGM batteries, absorbent glass mat batteries. They are new. They just they look old because I've pulled them in and out so many times. Took a little planning to uh, be able to put this box together. This box, I had a hard time finding a box that would hold those batteries and would be strong enough to hold the weight. Those batteries are very heavy. They're about 75 pounds each. This is a uh, waterproof and dustproof box. But AGM batteries are good for an application like this because they don't require, uh, you know, a, a maintenance. You don't have to, uh, you know, water them regularly or make sure they're okay. You just stick them in here and pretty much go. The other advantage is that during cold temperatures, they seem to hold up a little better than uh, lead acid batteries. Also, you can see that these batteries are not vented. Um, they are sealed. So uh, there would be little risk of escape of the of any gases uh, out of these batteries into here where it can cause corrosion of the wiring or components in here so but this battery had been sitting in a box we didn't know it but this post is broken so we're going to have to replace this battery as quickly as possible that's why that washer is there to uh, sort of you know hold that post in place until we can get this battery replaced but because the wi-fi people are coming today we needed to have some juice for them so here it is We've got this first solar panel hooked up into the top of our box here, going through our on-off switch for the solar panels, the PV, and also going through our lightning arrestor, uh, just in case we get lightning. And as you can see, a little sun shape right there tells me that we're receiving sunlight from the photovoltaic, photovoltaic panel, that it is feeding the battery. The controller is doing a boost which tells me it's throwing a little extra voltage onto it to bring it up to a normal state because it is low. And then uh, it also tells me that this load, uh, that little light bulb there, that it is supplying power to the load uh, lines, these two, positive and negative. So now just waiting on the Wi-Fi people to come. Pretty easy, pretty, uh, you know, fairly turnkey system here. And I'd like to thank Engineer 775 for... Uh, supplying uh, this four pole switch, lightning arresters, uh, the um, wiring, and the uh, solar panels, and this rack system. Even though these were stolen once and we had to replace them, uh, we purchased the panel rack again through Engineer 775 and Practical Preppers. And we just went ahead and got some solar panels locally because they, it was cheaper than shipping. But uh, I do recommend Engineer 775. Uh, he really knows this stuff. And, um, you know, he could put together a package for you too if you want and uh, just get it out to you. Makes it uh, a lot easier and a lot more simple to uh, get things together rather than designing it yourself. He's already done a billion of these, so he knows what to take. The installer showed up this morning and we're able to install this radio antenna but that is all because even though i told them i have a 12 volt system they brought out a 48 volt poe injector they told me that they special ordered a special poe injector for me for this and that they were going to send that out and i reminded them of that before they came out but they went and looked on their shelves, and lo and behold, they ordered the wrong converter or step-up transformer or PoE injector or something. So now I have to wait until they come back out with the proper stuff and get this done. After they came out with all of the equipment, got it installed and everything, and started doing the scan to see how strong the signal is from the tower to here, we discovered, and they discovered, that the signal would not be strong enough to give us reliable service. Um, they put the router in here, and the router was working fine, and we were running the computers and stuff, but they said that it's just not going to work. 
Yeah, the service is just too intermittent. We're right on the edge, apparently, of their radius. And so uh, we're not going to be able to get the internet from them or probably any other provider short of satellite. Um, but we've been using internet successfully uh, through a little AT&T hotspot mm -hmm. uh, that we've got. And, you know, we're able to do just about everything we need. We can stream, upload this video. Uh, all that kind of stuff. So we'll stick with that. But in the meantime, you know, we we've, we've done a lot of work um, in coming up with this solar Wi-Fi station. We've invested money in solar panels and equipment and boxes and you know a whole solar station out there <clears throat> just for being able to supply Wi-Fi to us. So, but all is not lost because we do have other uses for that station. One of the things we can do. Uh, is to use those two batteries uh, and an inverter, put it in the box, and we can power the well with, with AC in case we need to on cloudy days or something like that. We can actually power satellite, either satellite internet, which I don't think we want to do because it's slow and expensive, uh, but we could also just have a satellite dish and receive televised you know, things, streaming, whatever. I have a satellite dish, and have a satellite receiver box uh, in storage so you know it's no big deal just installing it and setting up satellite so we can have a satellite feed here to uh, to contentment another thing we could do is send power directly over to the trailer because it's not too far from there and then there'll be power um, off-grid power to the uh, the storage trailer and uh, guest trailer eventually so and so Lots of possible uses for that station. All is not lost. It's not a waste. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Mm -hmm. And thanks for watching. We really appreciate your viewership. Um, tell others about us and uh, get the word out about contentment. Um, maybe we'll have you out here someday as a guest and you can see all these fun things that we're building. So, Anyway, take care. Thanks for following this and uh, have a good one. Bye.